Are you considering streaming to YouTube after seeing how Twitch has been filled with drama lately? I personally love streaming on Twitch, but I also think that Twitch might implode tomorrow. So I think it's super valuable to know how to stream on YouTube as well as streaming on Twitch. So today I'll be showing you how I stream to YouTube using Streamlabs OBS and how I interchange between streaming to both of them in case you just want to get enough information to make that decision for yourself. So make sure to drop a quick like on the video and let me show you guys how to do it. So if this is your first time streaming, we're going to need two things. We're going to need a YouTube account and we're going to need Streamlabs. Streamlabs OBS. You can grab Streamlabs OBS at streamlabs.com. I'll also leave a link in the description down below, but you'll go to streamlabs.com and then you'll just download the Streamlabs desktop option. You'll just click it. It'll pop up and then you'll run the EXE. Once you run the EXE, you can run through the installation. Make sure to link your YouTube account as well as follow the on-screen instructions, but you don't have to sign up for the Prime. You can use the free version. It's totally fine. And then once you've gone through the initial installation process, it should look like this. I know there's a lot going on, but stick with me. I'm going to keep it as simple and basic as possible. Possible. If this is your first time using Streamlabs OBS, let me just show you what you're looking at. Your screen should be blank because you don't have anything here, but this is what it'll look like after you've gotten things up and running. On the left-hand side of the screen, this will be your chat room. If you don't see this, that's because you didn't click this little arrow. There's a little arrow on the side here. You can click that and it'll pop your chat room out. Since we're not streaming, the chat's not live, so there's nothing to show. It'll show your viewers in the top and whether you're online or offline. This is your video preview window. This is where you're going to be putting things on, and this is also the stream preview, so this is what your stream is seeing. Your mini feed is different events that happen. So when you get different subscribers, you get different followers, members, that sort of thing. These are your different scenes. Think of a different scene as a different collection of sources. And sources are these things. These are the different elements that you put on your scene. So the scene is your template, like your painting. And then the sources are your different paints, your different colors. So for example, this is my starting soon scene. It has all of my starting soon stuff on it. And then when I want to switch to my gameplay, I'll click on my main full screen stream. And that's a different scene. And this is what will be my gameplay scene so I can switch between the two very easily. So the sources, on the other hand, these are the different things that are on the screen. So the starting soon text, that's a different source. The blood dripping down, that's a different source. All these are different sources. They're different elements of the scene. For those that are streaming between YouTube and Twitch, what I found to be very useful is using different scene collections. So my scene collection here is YouTube main streaming setup. If I click the drop down, I can click on Twitch because I made a different scene collection. So that way, when I'm streaming to YouTube, I have all of these different scenes. And then when I'm have to Twitch, I can click on Twitch. It's going to load. And then it's going to have all of my different scenes and sources for my Twitch stream. And then on the bottom right hand side, we have our mixer, which is our different audio sources. So I have my game volume, my mic volume, and a bunch of other things that might have volume. And you can adjust those there. The next thing we want to do is go into the bottom left hand corner. We'll click on the settings. Make sure that you see your YouTube account and that you're logged in. If you're not logged in, you can click this little log in button. Go to the stream tab right here and then go to YouTube and log in there. Once you've got your YouTube account linked, we'll click on done. And let's make our first scene real quick. So for me, I'm going to click this plus button and it's going to be a new scene. So I'll hit done. I'm going to scroll down. I see that the new scene is selected. There's no sources whatsoever. So let's add both our game capture and a webcam. You don't have to add both, but I'll show you how to do it real quick. So we'll click on the plus button next to sources. We're going to click on screen capture. And then we'll click on add source. Click on add new source instead. You might not have that option. That's okay. Just add the source. And we're going to call this screen capture. Click add source. And so we have different options here. 99% of the time you can click on automatic and it will automatically pick up the game that you're playing, whether that be in windowed mode or full screen. So it's super convenient. So you can just click on automatic and it'll pop up. Or if that's not working for whatever reason, or you want to share your screen, you can share your entire screen here and that'll be a no fail fix. But if you don't feel comfortable sharing your entire screen, you can also see if it pops up in a window here and you got your game running, you can select your game window from there, click on that and it'll share that window like so. But most of the time you can leave it on automatic and it'll pick it up and be fine. So we'll click done. And let's say you want to add a webcam. We'll click on a plus, then we'll click on video capture device. We'll click on add source. I'm going to add a new source instead. We'll call this one webcam. Click add source again, and then I'm going to choose my webcam from the list, and then I'll click close, and you can go ahead and drag it wherever you want. You can also use the corners to make it bigger or smaller, and you can hold down the alt key and drag, and you can also crop it as well. So you can get it just to the perfect size that you want, and I'm going to leave it right about here. So I've gone ahead and booted up Castle Crashers, so you can see it's automatically picked it up, which is super nice. We have our visuals done. We just need to do our audio now. So we'll go to the bottom left corner, click on settings, then we'll click on audio and then go to desktop audio device one. And then you can click on default and that'll be the default on where it's coming out from. But if you know your speakers or where your game volume is coming from, then you can go and click on it specifically like I have. So now we need our microphone. So we'll click on mic auxiliary device one. We'll find our microphone from the list, click on it, and then we're done. By the way, if you're wondering why the game volume is not showing up, it's because I'm alt tabbed out of it because it'd be super annoying to have in this video. But now we have our visuals. We have our audio. We just 
just need to do a couple of different stream setting tweaks, but I'll keep it super easy for you. So we're gonna click on output and then we're gonna go to output mode simple. And then if we wanna stream at 720p 60 FPS, we'll do 4,500 bit rate. For your encoder, if you have it, do NVEC new, or you can do NVEC, or you can use whatever you have here because each laptop or computer is gonna be different. But if you don't have any of these, you can do X264, but just know that your computer is gonna be working a little bit harder. And then the audio bit rate, 320. Every person's settings are gonna be different because everybody has a different computer and everybody has different internet speed. So in the next video, I'll be showing you how to do the best settings for your computer, but just use these settings for now, just so you can get a hang of things. So now we'll click on video. For the base resolution, you wanna choose whatever your monitor is. So mine's 1080p, so I have it on 1080. For output, we wanna stream whatever we're streaming for, and that's 720p 60 FPS based off the bit rate that I chose for you guys. And so we wanna keep it at 720 because 720p 60 FPS makes sense, right? For your downscale filter, I like Lanskos, which is 32 samples, common FPS, and 60 FPS. So if you're still with me now, we're gonna click done. So now we gotta head over to YouTube. So make sure you're logged in with your YouTube account. Make sure to go to the top right corner, click create, and then go live. If this is your first time going live, you're gonna get hit with the picture like this, where you gotta enter your phone number and wait 24 hours. It sucks, I know, but you just gotta do it. Now you can see we have different tabs on the side. We're gonna start with manage because you're gonna always want to schedule your stream, even if you wanna stream now, and I'll show you why. So click on schedule stream. We're gonna do streaming software because we're using Streamlabs OBS. If you stream before, you can reuse the settings like this, but if you're starting off fresh, you gotta create new. I'm gonna click reuse settings and show you why it's so convenient. It automatically fills out all of your previous settings before, but it's the same as create new, but it'll just be empty. So put in your title, put in your description, everything that you want to be shown there. Category is usually gaming, put in your game title, make a thumbnail, you want a thumbnail, they're important. And then I have a playlist for my live stream so you can make a playlist and add it there. You can click on show more and you can mess with these different settings here. Honestly, the only thing is like tags, kinda, those don't even really matter anymore. Once you've chosen the settings you want here, you can click on next. This will be your customization, leave live chat on, you can do live chat replay on or off, doesn't matter. You can put a slow mode on if you think people are gonna spam. You can leave it on to anybody chatting or subscribers. Redirect doesn't really matter unless you have a premiere and you can drive people from your live stream to your premiere. The trailer is cool if you want to add a little sneak peek of what your stream's going to be about. So if you want to include like a 30 second clip of what your stream's going to be, you can include it there and it'll give them something to watch while they're waiting for your stream to show. You don't have to do either of these. Usually I don't do them, so I'll hit next. When you stream, you're going to want to do public so everyone can watch your stream. For this video, I'm going to choose private because I don't want to bother my subscribers right now for the tutorial, but you're going to want to leave it on public. So you want to put your schedule time. So if you want to stream right now, then you can put in today's date. And then let's say it's 1230 right now, then you can put 1235 or you can do 1245. It doesn't matter because it's just going to give them an estimate when you're going to be live. And then when we go live, it'll just start. So I'm going to say 1245 because we're going to go live now. I'm going to click done. You can see we got everything set up here, right? So there's only a couple more things we got to do. The very bottom, we want to choose ultra low latency. I like talking to chat with like a two to three second delay. Low latency, there's going to be like a five second delay and normal latency see there can be a lot of delay. So the interaction between chat and myself, I prefer ultra low latency. Depending on you and your setup, you can switch between the three. So this is all ready to go. So let's go into Streamlabs. Once we're ready to go live, we'll click on go live. And then you can see that our YouTube is linked. But the important part is the event. So we just made the event through the schedule stream. So we'll click on the drop down. Then we see our event is right here. So it automatically fills everything out for us again, which is fantastic. Make sure that you're on public here. Then you can confirm everything is correct. And then once you're ready to start, we'll hit confirm and go live. Give it a second. It's going to say it's going to update your settings and do everything and start transmitting the video. It says we're live. Now we're on YouTube. It says that we're live in this top corner and give it a second. It'll pop up. It needs to do the little loading thing. It's going to refresh. It says excellent condition. We can see the preview of our live stream. You can see that my webcam is getting picked up. You can see that everything is live. It's good to go. So that's what they're going to see. But if we go back into Streamlabs, you can see that conveniently the chat is not working for whatever reason, probably because they know I'm recording a tutorial. But usually the YouTube chat will be there, but we can actually fix this in case this does happen to you. Then we'll actually go back to YouTube, click on these little dots here, then we'll click on pop out chat. What you can do is drag the pop out chat and put it on the side and cover up your chat on Streamlabs OBS. So I can take this and I can just kind of put it here. And that way you can actually type and talk to your chat through the live stream. Because if you use the chat room that Streamlabs provides, you actually can't type back to them. So this method is actually nicer to do because you can type back to them if you want. Obviously it's going to be, you know, a little annoying because you have to have it above Streamlabs OBS. But very very importantly, you want to make sure to change top chat to live chat all the time because top chat might hide people's messages. Live chat will show all of the messages that show up. So make sure to click live chat. But once you're ready to end the stream, click on end stream. Now we'll go to YouTube and then we can also click on end stream on YouTube. And then we'll click on end and it'll show that stream has finished. It'll show your metrics. And then if you want, you can click edit in studio and you have to wait for it to 
to process, which could be a while if you're doing a long, long stream, but you can also just trim and cut and do it this way. It'll make you save it as a new video if you don't wait for it to be processed, but if you wait for it to be processed, which can take a while, then you can go and save it and it'll edit the live stream and not make a new video. You can actually see your live streams by going to YouTube Studio and then going to your channel content and then click on live and then it'll show your live stream right here. But now it is absolutely crucial that we get the right settings for your computer and your internet speed. So you need to watch this video next to me. It's going to show you how to do that. This is going to be a series. So I'll also show you how to get the cool overlays, the cool alerts, the chat bot, all that fun stuff. You guys just got to give me some time to make the videos. So watch the video to the side of me, comment down below spooky gang if you made it to the end of the video and I'll see you in the next one.